Welcome to today's edition of In Memoriam, guys. And you've probably been waiting a long time for this. I've been waiting to get it done also. This is the In Memoriam episode of The Man, The Myth, The Legend. If you've ever watched Jumanji, if you've ever watched Aladdin, if you've ever watched Miss Doubtfire, Hook, Flubber, etc, etc. This episode of In Memoriam is on The Man, The Myth, The Legend. Robin Williams. Robin Williams made the best and pretty most convincing adult Peter Pan there is, just like Dustin Hoffman made the most convincing hook. Just like Robin Williams made the best genie, sorry Dan Castanella, um, he was the genie, end of story. And he also made a very convincing woman and no amount of sequels or prequels or any offshoots of Mrs. Doubtfire is going to change that fact, for sure. And before I forget his obvious film debut, he made the greatest real-life Popeye. I mean, there is no doubt about that in any stretch of the imagination. Unfortunately, in August 11th of last year, um, Robin Williams committed suicide. It was a bitter pill to swallow for a lot of people who loved him and could never say a really bad word about him. And it was a very, very sad day, not only in the world of comedy, not only in the world of films, but in real life. And anybody who was ever a fan of his, anybody who was ever a friend of his, and even for his family, I mean, I'm never going to discount the ones that it hurt the most. It was a very, very sad day. Um, Robin had a history of depression. Um, he had dementia with Lewy bodies. It was possible he had Parkinson's. Um, and those are, of course, what led to his death. Um, suicide by asphyxiation. And it was a really, really damaging day to a lot of people. Back in the late 1970s and the early 1980s, Williams had a an addiction to cocaine. And I'm not saying this had a hand in his death or what have you, but um, it, w it really had a hold on him. Until the birth of his first child, Zach, and the death of his friend, John Belushi, Robin was really gripped by his cocaine addiction. And when the events of his friend's passing and his son's birth came about, he quit drugs and alcohol. And he took up exercise and cycling and he has been quoted as saying that bicycling and cycling has saved his life. And that was, that was very, very good. That was very good. And although Robin did have a problem with falling off the wagon whereas, where alcohol was concerned. And he has never shied away from that. Robin should be given a lot of credit for never shying away from his addiction to alcohol. And, but he has never ever gone back to cocaine. He has publicly stated like, all the things that were negative about cocaine. Um, being paranoid, being impotent, um, useless conversations until midnight, waking up at dawn feeling like a vampire on a day pass. He's never ever gone back to cocaine and because he doesn't want that life and it hurt him a lot but he has took it in his stride that he had a problem with alcohol and he kept going back to it I mean in 2000 and, uh, 2006 he checked himself into rehab and stated that he was an alcoholic and that's what happened Three years later, he was hospitalized due to his heart problems. 
and he postponed a one-man tour to replace his aortic valve. The surgery was completed on March 13th in 2009, and I think I'm sure the world was very thankful for that. In the mid of last year, he admitted himself into an addiction treatment centre for treatment related to his alcoholism. The one thing we can say about Robin was, although he had problems staying on the wagon, at least, at least he had the willingness to get help and try and beat it. And he's to be commended for that. He is to be majorly commended for that. Before his death, his wife has gone on record saying that he ha he was sober towards the end towards the end of his life, but he was diagnosed with early stage Parkinson's disease, and he wasn't ready to share that knowledge with the world, which is very very understandable. I mean, that's damning news, and who would share that with the world right away? Like it's a badge of honour. It was not good at all. In the final autopsy report on Robin's death, they found that no illegal drugs or alcohol was present in his system, and that was good. Um, any prescription drugs that were in his in his system were at therapeutic levels, and that's also good. All he was doing was medicating himself. He wasn't taking anything to get high or what have you, and that's um. It's still terrible that he passed away, but he was getting he was getting help. He knew he had problems, and he was getting help. He is to be commended for every effort he has maintained. During the autopsy um, examination of his brain tissue, discovered the dementia with Lewy bodies, and it was diffuse. And. It's been said that, that was the critical factor in his decision to commit suicide, which is very, very tragic. And my thoughts and feelings are still with Robin's immediate family. And I hope no one ever has to go through this again, because it is a very, very damning illness. And it's a very, very damning thing that somebody you love has committed suicide. And my thoughts and prayers to them. What's very incredible about Williams is his acting career. Completely amazing. 106 acting credits, at least. That is incredible for any actor. In a career spanning from 1977 to 2014, that is an incredible feat by any actor. Robin Williams is a legend. A complete legend in the film industry, in the comedy industry, even in the TV show industry. I mean, does anybody remember Mork and Mindy? That was Robin's show. And he is just, he was just an incredible man and he still is, even after he has passed. And the mark he has left on all of us is extraordinary. Of course, as a fan, if I mentioned TV shows, I'd be very remiss if I didn't talk about his appearance on Whose Line Is It Anyway. That is easily the funniest episode of Whose Line I have ever seen. And not just not just for Robin, for Wayne, for Ryan, and for Colin also, and even Drew Carey. I mean, a lot of people don't like Drew Carey. I do, but getting back to the point at hand here. Um, yeah, Robin appeared on an episode of the original United States version of Whose Line Is It Anyway? And it was, it was weird seeing Robin with um, blonde hair at the time, but I digress, he was still a very funny man, and he gelled really well with Wayne, Ryan, and Colin, and even Drew. And he just fit the show so well. I mean, if he was still alive today, I'm sure he gladly would have done another episode of the new reboot, which is um, done without Drew Carey because Drew Carey is doing The prices Right now, and that's always been weird to me, but whatever. Um, it would have been great to see Robin on another show like that, and 
definitely would make up for the amount of repeats that we got on the t television at the minute. I mean, if you if you're living in England, repeats are the bane of our television existence. Anything by Robin Williams would definitely make it worthwhile. What Robin Williams meant to me personally, um, he was the voice of the genie, he always will be. Even though my favourite film in the Aladdin series is The Return of Jafar, um, Robin Williams will always be the genie. No matter how, if you could try to replace him with Homer Simpson, it doesn't work. Um, he was a very strong human being who never wanted to let his problems become too public and didn't want to push it onto anybody else. He thought his problems were his own and he tried to get help for those problems. So he was very strong in wanting to deal with his own problems his own way. And he's to be commended for that. Uh, he was a major, major nerd. He was a gaming nerd. Um, he, he named his daughter Zelda, Zelda Williams. I mean, some of the um, abuse she got on Twitter from trolls has been fucking awful. And whoever you are, you are fucking disgusting and I hope you fucking drop dead. Um, yeah, his, his daughter was named Zelda. Um, that means Robin Williams was an avid player of Legends of Zelda, probably Ocarina of Time. Um, after his death, World of Warcraft placed an in-game monument to him. I'm sure other video games have done so too. Um, to me, he was the king of comedy when I was a kid. Any film that I saw Robin Williams in, I was like, oh my god, this guy is so amazing, he makes me laugh all the time. And that was why I was a little sad when I watched Return of Jafar and the genie wasn't Robin Williams. But I remember thinking that every time a 12 year old me or 13 year old me watched a Robin Williams movie, it was instant magic. No matter if the film didn't do very well or anything, um, Hook is one of my favourite films, and that film apparently didn't do very well. Even though, like I said at the top of the video, Robin Williams makes an awesome adult Peter Pan, and Dustin Hoffman makes the greatest Captain Hook. Bar none. End of story. Um, yeah. To me, he was the king. Back when I was a kid, he was the king. I mean, many of his films, like, leading up to his death, like, the past few years, they haven't been quite as memorable, but I'm betting they're still pretty funny. I will say this right now, I'm not a fan of Night at the Museum. Not saying anything bad against people who were fans of Night at the Museum, I just wasn't enthralled, and I probably never will be, but... If um, if um, you have a chance to see the last night of the museum film that he was in, go see it. it was, it's probably a tremendous tribute to the man. I mean, I won't because I'm not a fan of Night of the Museum. I'm a fan of Robin, and to me, he'll be the king of comedy from back when I was a kid and all his films that I watched. To me, he's like probably the biggest celebrity nerd that we know. And he'll always be the greatest genie in the lamp there ever will be. And that's the truth. He's the king. I mean, a DVD that I once lent to a friend and never got back um, was his stand-up routine from 2003 or four. I'm not sure, but he had a stand-up DVD and that was friggin' hilarious and it was wonderful to see the flip side of what I saw when I was a kid that he was able to use F-bombs and the S-word and all these different swear words that I probably use way too much in these videos but fuck it Robin Williams was always the first to smile and the first to make anyone smile and that's that's the God honest truth he was the first to make people smile and the first to make people laugh and he was the first to smile and laugh if it meant he brought life, light to other people 
and their lives. And he did that pretty damn well. Uh, a lot of people really miss Robin. I miss Robin every day because um, this world lost this world lost a true angel, an angel that had a lot of demons, but he was slowly trying to defeat them. He fought every day, and Robin Williams will always be remembered for that. He'll be remembered for his incredible career. He'll be remembered for all those films. 106 acting credits. I said it earlier. That is incredible. He'll be remembered for that. He'll be remembered for Mork and Mindy. That one little appearance on Whose Lines It Anyway. People will remember that. Flubber. I'm, I'm not saying anything about Flubber. There are too many dirty jokes that can come out of that film. Um... And he will always be remembered for being a first class human being. And I think you can all agree with me on that. I stutter and stumble over my words sometimes, but when it comes to Robin Williams, I do get a bit cho choked up. Because I was sad that he passed. As were a lot of other people the world over. I hope... He is resting in peace, knowing the incredible and wonderful mark that he left on all of us. Rest in peace, Robin Williams. We all miss you. And we always will miss you. Thanks for watching this episode of In Memoriam, guys. Godspeed, Robin Williams. And to all of you that love him, and to all of you that are watching this video right now, in tribute to the man, Peace. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and everything, and if you could for a moment to check out my other videos on my channel, and if you haven't already, subscribe and keep it here for Deadbolt Dragons. Peace.